the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful thing this morning to hear all the crying and cooing, screaming babies, all the crying and cooing and screaming young children. You know, um, thanks be to God, and I'm thankful that I'm uh, needing to often remind our parish that the children are a blessing. But actually, it's a sign, it's a, an absolute direct sign of God's blessing on us as a community. It's important for us to understand that there are principles to life. There are principles to life. There are things that are, are like laws of, of nature, laws of the supernatural or the spiritual world, if you will. And the fact is that life has certain characteristics to it. One of the things about life is that life you can't control. Life is something that you engage with. Life is something that happens. Life is something that you participate in. It is when we are ignorant of these principles of life that we can become hardened to God, we become hardened to life. This is what can happen to a community. They aren't aware that children or other things that God has placed in front of them are a gift in a way in which they are to engage life. But also, too, this was the same thing that happened to the rich man. He was not aware of the principles of life. As a Jew, he should have known certain things. But as many people, him being wealthy, it superseded his understanding of himself. More than seeing himself as a Jew, more than seeing himself as the people of God, he saw himself in light of his riches and his possessions. So he became ignorant of the principle of God. The principle of God that he most of, that he should have been aware of is that God is always looking to balance things out. As you see in nature. Nature is always looking to balance herself out. So, in the same principle, God saw the greed, he saw the avarice, he saw the sin of the rich man. And God loved the rich man. And so, depending on the translation you read, it says that Lazarus is placed at the gate of the rich man. Lazarus is placed at the gate of the rich man. Lazarus found himself at the gate of the rich man. God put Lazarus there for the sake of the rich man. The rich man would find balance. The rich man ignored this. So the rich man's life became one not just of being out of balance, but darkness. Every day that passed in which he did not give mercy to Lazarus, was another day in which his heart became hardened, and another day in which his papers, if you will, were signed. Each day, Lazarus overlooked the rich man faring sumptuously. And every day in which he didn't complain, and every day in his humility when he asked of the rich man for something, this was one more day in which he was growing in the principles of God, and growing to what it means to be like an angel. So both of these men were given each other for their benefit. One understood, one did not. These principles of life don't just apply to them in this parable, this telling that the Lord gives us, it applies to us. Each one of us can think that maybe you're the Lazarus, or maybe perhaps you're the rich man. And so I would say to you, who has been placed at your gate? Who is in front of you that God has called you to be merciful to? Who is in front of you that God has called you to tend to? Do you see people who aren't even the people of God? Do you see non-believers, heathens and pagans caring for others when you should be doing it? Just how the rich man, he saw the dogs licking Lazarus sores. The dogs! The dogs tended to him better than he did. We do the same. We look at someone in our life or situation in our life and just kind of like, ah. Oh. We shrug our shoulders. We go back to our phones. We go back to our barbecue. And we just go on with our life. This is how we find ourselves to be like the rich man. We don't see the Lazarus that God's put in front of us for our salvation. Perhaps you may be saying, well, that's definitely not me. I'm not a rich man. I got it tough. Okay? Fair enough. So 
So in your heart, if you think that you're Lazarus, if you think that you have it tough, and let me ask you this. Are you complaining? Are you cursing the rich man in your life who isn't tending to you? Are you shaking your fist? Because if you are, you're not like Lazarus. Lazarus endured. Lazarus understood something. And God rewarded him. Let's have eyes to look and to see. Who are we? Are we the rich man or are we Lazarus? If we're Lazarus, are we acting like Lazarus? Are we blessing instead of cursing? Are we patient? Or are we impetuous? God will be looking, he'll be watching, and he'll be testing. And one day God will judge. May your guardian angels give all of you wisdom and discernment to know who you are and how to be. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs>